there. Lance freezes Sean Murphy with a cutter. Lance McCullers Jr. striking out. Nick Allen making quick work as he picks up his second strikeout. There goes the runner. The pitch is a strike. The throw by Machete. He is out at second base. Strike three called. Lance McCullers Jr. Welcome back. Five shutout innings so far. Here's a ground ball. Could be another 6-5-3. Bregman the turn. Double play and Lance is fired up. Six shutout innings. It is return to the mound. Strohs at four right here on the wheelhouse. A segment we do every day at four o'clock where we talk <clears> about the latest with the Houston Astros. How scary is this rotation? Lance McCullers back goes out there. Six scoreless innings. Uh, I was wrong. I said, hey, maybe give him one more rehab start. And, well, the Astros said, bleep you, Jake Asman. We're starting him against the A's. <laughs> it's like facing a minor league team anyway. And Lance proceeded to go out there, and he looked the part. He looked like a guy that obviously is one of the better starters in the American League when he's right. And he was certainly right on Saturday making his season debut. It certainly felt to me like 2021 Lance McCullers was there for most of that start. I know some folks are unhappy with the walks. Look, Lance walks people. That's what, that's what happens. He led the league in walks last year, 76 walks. Like, he, he walks people. Like, that's going to happen. But when guys aren't getting hits, the walks don't matter as much. Walks kill you when guys get hits after you walk people. But he's out there dialing it up like he was, and the Strohs are playing the defense that they had behind him. Like, I'm not worried about a couple of walks here or there. There had to be just some people wringing their hands around the American League like, oh, man, you got to <laughs> deal with this guy too? <laughs> they got the freaking Cy Young Award winner. Fromber's better than he's ever been. And now this guy's there? Come on. Yeah, when the Astros got to the World Series last year, they didn't have Justin Verlander or Lance McCullers. And those guys at various points over their careers have been bona fide aces. Last year, McCullers, a bona fide ace, had the second best ERA in the American League. Justin Verlander's the favorite to win the Cy Young right now. That guy's been an ace seemingly forever. So, yeah, this team without those two guys got within two wins of a World Series. Their starting rotation has been money all year. And, Jake, it feels like a trade deadline acquisition getting Lance McCullers back. And if he can go out and give you what he gave you on Saturday, just about every time he's out there, uh, it's going to be the biggest trade deadline acquisition the Astros made, and it's going to be a huge boost to this already loaded rotation. Yeah, uh, I know it was Oakland sweeping the A's. Doesn't do a whole lot for a lot of people, but people, I think, around the American League already feared the Astros going in. Now that McCullers is back, I think this whole team just got a little bit scarier. If he pitches like that, he's a lock to be in the playoff rotation. Yes. And that was not a... And that was a conversation we were having going into this weekend series. Hey, Lance has got to go out there. He's got to pitch well. He can't just be okay and be guaranteed a spot in the playoff rotation where you're going to need four guys. So, look, he's not going to go six scoreless every outing. If he does, he's certainly going to be in the playoff rotation. But if he's close to what he was on Saturday, uh, you're going to have him as one of your four guys, probably in your top three if we're being real. He's probably going to be one of your first three starters right behind Verlander and Fromber if he, play, if he continues to pitch like that. So Saturday is a very fun day, not only because of the totality of the result and everything that Lance did in the whole Astros game, everything, but you look at Saturday and you got to think, well, he might be building on that. There have been times where 81 pitches in a Lance McCullough start got you through four innings. Like There have been times where Lance has struggled to be economical with his pitches. 81 through 6 is a pretty damn good performance, especially coming back from the injury. And you got to think, he's on the 81 pitch count. He's on the, you know, we talked about it, early 80s. He's on that pitch count. Uh, well, what's it going to look like if he can have another 10, 20, 30 pitches to his ledger each time he goes out there? Like, And that's the first one back? What if he can build on that and he gets even better than what you saw on Saturday? Like, there's a, there's a lot of things that can run wild thinking about how good this Lance McCullers situation can turn out for the Astros. Yeah, four or five starts down the road. If McCullers gives you six innings of scoreless ball and only 81 pitches, he's going to go out there for the seventh, right? But you figure the Astros, like they did during McCullers' rehab in the minor leagues, are going to slowly ramp this thing up a little bit. And next time he's out there, he might touch 90 pitches before maybe getting to 100 where he's maxed out just like everybody else in that Astros rotation. Having McCullers back right now might ensure you that Lance McCullers is going to be the old Lance McCullers by the time you get to the postseason, right? Like, it was a fine line. The Astros had to walk. They didn't want to bring him back too early to risk aggravation or a re-injury or anything like that. But just getting a number of regular season starts under his belt 
really important. Get that ramping up stuff uh, ramping up stuff done now. So by the time you get to the meaningful games in the month of October, you feel like Lance is as close to 2021 Lance as he can possibly be. This was Lance McCullers talking about his start and being back with the Astros for the first time in 2022. I mean, I just want to be a productive part of the team, and I want to help you know this this team win. I think we're the best team in baseball, and I just want to go out there and just be a part of that. You know, our guys have done a fabulous job all season. You guys have seen it. I mean, we just play great baseball, especially the way we've thrown the ball. Can't say enough about our starters and our and the way the bullpen has handled themselves this year. I mean, look at tonight. You know, Brady picking up two innings at the end of the game, just you know coming up big for us. So I just want to be a productive part of that. And um, tonight was a, a good first step. So there you have it from Lance, who. Obviously, it will be much more than just a productive part of the team if he continues to pitch like what he did on Saturday. Yeah, that, that's going to be a productive part of the team. Oh, six inning scoreless is every time? All right, oh, cool. That, that was pretty productive. Yeah, pretty productive. Mm-hmm. Pretty productive. One quite the 76 pitch perfect game that I was hoping for. So a little disappointment there. But 81, six scoreless, we'll live with it. Well, here was the thing that Lance did really well. He did not allow any runs, but specifically he did not allow any runs in the first inning. Problem was, Alex Bregman hit a two-run home run on Saturday, so <laughs> Cody lost his nerf bet, right? No runs first inning. Nerfy. Nerfy. So it was Yerfy Kellner that I should have taken his advice. Yerfy Kellner, yes, earned runs first inning. That's why Yerfy Kellner was a champ of the day nomination last week. Everybody <laughs> knew it was going to come to fruition on Saturday. How about Alex Bregman, too? I mean, McCullers, I think, is the biggest storyline from the weekend just because it was his first start of the year and he pitched the way that he did, but... Forget Alex Bregman being back. He's back back. Uh, he is ridiculously hot right now, hitting 400 in the month of August, an OPS over 1,100, two first-inning home runs over the weekend. Look, you'll take any home run whenever you get it, but if you can give your starter a crooked number in the bottom of the first inning, that just gives everybody around you so much more confidence, including the starting pitcher, knowing that he has a lead to work with. Alex Bregman has been really, really good as of late. I don't know if he's going to hit 400 for the entire month, but seeing this version of him makes me feel really, really good about what the Astros are going to get from him in October. You've sort of seen signs of this over the past 30 days or so. It's kind of been more consistent from Bregman. He's been hitting the ball more, you know, maybe a little bit less from the walk standpoint, but actually putting the ball in play, getting on base, showcased a little bit of the power, and then in the last seven days, he's hit nearly 500. Like, you, you had these stretches from Alex Bregman, you remember, Okay, now this is why the Astros paid this guy, and this is what this guy is capable of. And if you simultaneously get this guy with what Jordan is capable of doing on a consistent basis, we know what Jose Altuve is. And if you get a little uptick from different guys throughout this lineup, like the Kyle Tucker situation, you're not going to feel that loss of Michael Brantley as much as we thought about it. Like Michael Brantley just felt like the only guy who could get a hit in the World Series last year. He's not going to be on this team anymore. Season ending shoulder surgery. He's done. So he's not coming back anytime soon. So if that's the Bregman you're going to have, you know, really solid, dependable guy, it's going to hit for average, it's going to get on base, and you're going to have, you know, uh, Jordan the way we know about what Jordan can do, you you can absolutely win a World Series with those guys. It's why I think sometimes the Dusty conversation can be a little overblown. Like, there are some issues you can nitpick with the lineup for sure, but still, you rather have, I think, the Astros over any team in the American League right now. you got the best record. They played really well the last month or so. You got a great rotation, which is usually how the best teams usually win, built through the starters. You feel really good about where the bullpen's at. I mean, despite some question marks with the manager, overall, you got to feel really good about this team just, what, 45 games or so away from the start of the playoffs for the Astros? Yeah, this team is built to win a World Series, and it's felt like a World Series or bust season since opening day, but now that we've seen it for more than 110 games and now that the reinforcements are coming – uh, this really feels like a World Series or bust situation for the Astros. They've got a two-and-a-half game lead now for the top seed in the American League. We'll see if that continues. But, yeah, I mean, look, just getting back there isn't enough. Like, Dusty Baker, he's doing a good job. The lineups are still questionable. Now, he did play Mancini and Vasquez some over the weekend, and those guys rewarded him with three hit games. But it's like the pressure is on him to take it a step further than what he took last year. Uh, This is a not just get to the World Series. This is a win the World Series or this season is going to feel like a failure to a lot of people outside of the organization, but also inside of the organization. And it might require some changes to be made. So, yeah, look, you you can't dunk on Dusty for everything. Uh, This team has been really freaking good, and he deserves some credit for that. But now that, I mean, we already thought this team was really good, Cody. Now that we see McCullers back in the fold, now that we're seeing this version of Bregman back in the fold, the trade deadline pieces are coming through. 
it feels like the bar, the expectations have raised even more on Dusty and just about everybody in that clubhouse. It just shows you what they're capable of on any given day. They're capable of being the best team in baseball, and they're capable of being damn near unstoppable. Now, okay, that's the ace. Let's see it against a little bit better competition. It upticks a little bit with the Chicago White Sox. A little annoyed. Lance doesn't get to pitch against the White Sox. Would have been a nice little, like, uh, return to action for him. I get starting him at home so, and keeping mm-hmm. him on regular rest, but would have loved to see him against the White Sox considering he – yeah, handled them pretty well last year. Yeah, it would have been full circle, right? Yeah. Gets hurt in Chicago, gets to make his first appearance in Chicago. That's okay. I'll take what we saw from him on Saturday. But that next Lance start is against the Atlanta Braves. Mm. And basically, if Lance beats the Braves, then the Astros won last year's World Series. I want to go ahead and get that out there. They would have swept them. Yeah. Won every game 20 to nothing, probably. So no pressure on the Braves for that game, but that <laughs> game is for last year's World Series. Oh, is that how it works? Yep. So if the Astros win, they're going to get a different pennant. They're going to get a gold one at Minute Maid? Yep. Okay. They'll get the piece of metal that Rob Manfred once <laughs> famously talked about. Yes, they'll get the piece of metal. They'll get the, the pennant. Everything. Yeah. I have mean, to retroactively do a parade. How does that work? Time machine. Can we all fit in a DeLorean? We'll figure it out. Okay. Something to note about tonight's lineup. Jose Altuve is not in the lineup. Could just be a day off. No word yet. From the Astros on that, I guess Dusty hasn't been made available yet before tonight's game. And Jeremy Pena was originally in the Astros lineup batting leadoff, but he's been replaced by Mauricio Dubon, unclear as to why. Hmm. So no Altuve, no Pena. We'll get an update to you on that as soon as we know from the Astros. Don't love that. I mean, it stays off Dusty, so you assume the Altuve thing was a normal day off, right? The Astros are in the midst of a a long stretch of not having a day off, but the late scratch for Pena is, is an interesting one. Not ideal. Don't love that. But hopefully things that. are fine. So mm. Mauricio Dubon and Aledmus Diaz, your middle infielders today. Well, Mauricio Dubon and Yuli Gurriel, your one-two hitters tonight. Should I bet on the White Sox? <laughs> I mean, we're just pumping up the Astros, talking about how they might be the best team in baseball. I think right now they they are right there with the Dodgers in that conversation, but... Mauricio Dubon and Yuli Gurriel are your one-two against Johnny Cueto tonight. That's that's not what you want. They shall overcome. A huge thank you to you for watching my video. This is Jake Asman here. If you're a Houston sports fan, subscribe to my channel and then listen to our radio show, The Wheelhouse, every single weekday on ESPN Houston from 3 to 7 p.m. It's on ESPN 97.5 FM and 92.5 FM. Thanks for being a listener.